some some people like to live in misery. Some people like to live in drama. So I'm not one of those people. <laughs> Damn, Q. Baby, you did that. What up, what up, what up, man? It's your boy, Shy. Shy versus everybody podcast. Voice of Detroit. Motherfucking podcast MVP in this motherfucker, man. The champ is here! The champ is here! What's up, what's up, what's up? It's your boy, Shy. Shy versus everybody podcast, episode 202. Moving on up, moving on up. Uh, We haven't did this in a minute. I haven't did a uh, podcast remotely since 20, 2020. Yeah. When the whole COVID thing happened. So, you know, we was forced to uh, do podcasts like that instead of being in person. But uh, we got somebody from Milwaukee today. She's a uh, producer, a mother, uh, a wedding coordinator. You know, I saw your little your scene. I was just watching the show. Can we call you an actress? Yes. Okay, okay, we got uh Erin McKenzie, Erin the producer. She go by on Instagram. How you doing? I'm doing good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. I can't complain besides being in the car, but that's what happens when you got kids. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I get that. But how everything been? Uh man, everything has been great. You know, we just had our premiere this past weekend. So mm-hmm. Oh yeah, for it was sure. A we, great definitely gonna touch on that. Definitely gonna touch on that. But uh we start off every show with a salute me while I'm here. A lot of times we wait for people to pass away before we give them their flowers instead of, you know, saying let them receive and smell it while you're still, you know, on earth. But it can't be the easy answer. It can't be if you're in a relationship. It can't be mom or dad. And it can't be your kids. It got to be somebody outside that easy answer. So do you have anybody you want to go ahead and show some love to? Um, I have a couple people that I want to show love to. Um, uh, first, Swift Sloan. Okay. Uh, I want to show love to him. That's like my mentor mm-hmm. on not only the business, but just life in general. Mm-hmm. Um, another person I want to give, um, show some love to is um, my my peoples at Vital Image. Okay. <laughs> okay. My career in general, but okay. one person I want to salute for real though is Swift. Okay. 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 Um, I don't have nobody to salute. Uh, I'm going to salute my, my, uh, my cousin. Uh, my first cousin, she uh, graduated from West Bloomfield High School. Um, I went to her open house yesterday. She will be attending Tuskegee University uh, this fall. So I want to salute her and tell her congratulations and keep up the good work and don't let those grades slip and don't talk to no boys. <laughs> right. Congratulations to you. For sure, for sure, for sure. But uh, just before we dive into the um, to your new series, let's just talk about this year, going into 2024. What were your plans? What were some goals? What were some things you wanted to continue and some things you wanted to eliminate? Hmm. Going into 2024, uh, my goal was to have Let Me Be out streaming, dropped. Um, the plan is to market it across the world. Mm-hmm. Um, and what you said, things that I wanted to start doing. Start doing and things that you wanted to let go. If it was anything. Things that I want to start doing. I wanted to uh, start touching more hands out here um, as far as just like doing marketing and um, stuff like that. Mm-hmm. It's really hard for me. What I want to let go mm-hmm. is being shy. Okay. Because okay. I can be really shy when it comes to big groups of people, which yeah. is very contradictory to what I do. Is but. That- it happens. So I'm trying to genuinely let that go. Yeah. That's the same here with me. I I, I know a lot of times my uh, people tell me I need to get out more and stuff like that. And I, I just don't like being around a lot of people. I used to back when I was younger, but as I got older, I'd rather be to myself, you know, with a couple people and stuff. Was, was there anything this year that you discovered about yourself that you may have didn't know, like things that might have been holding you back from progressing? Um, what I discovered about myself was how powerful I really am, mm-hmm. how powerful my mind really is. Mm-hmm. And, um, I used to be a big procrastinator. Oh, I've been slowly getting over the, over the years I've been doing better. But, mm-hmm. um, this past year I kind of found some hacks and some tricks in my own brain mm-hmm. on how 
try not to procrastinate on things. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Come on, I I procrastinate so much. I gotta just hey, I be having to check myself a lot of times. Yeah. <laughs> when you say um, you don't realize how powerful you are. Elaborate on that, like touch on that a little bit. Um. Well, in the sense of, for one, I, I just I've been working really hard for the past three, four years. Mm -hmm. And um, I think like time just moves so fast. And when you're constantly doing things and you're knocking things off your checklist, you sometimes it's hard for you to fully take in what's going on around you. Mm -hmm. um, so to get back to your question, mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> which I forgot, I'm not gonna lie, I kind of forgot your question. Oh, when well, you were talking about how powerful you are. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> How about flying? Yeah, so um we so I'm so now I'm kind of like taking in everything that I've been doing mm -hmm. and I'm like, okay, this is this is real. And mm -hmm. knowing that um everything that I've been doing patiently, like just waiting and working and staying down, like mm -hmm. that really that that was the answer. That's okay. what I had to do and I did it and now I'm here. Do you know what I'm saying? No, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Now when you talk about procrastination. Can you kind of um compare that to being I'm I don't, I hate to say scared, but a lot of times we be afraid. We want success, but we be afraid of the outcome of success. Um, sometimes when you procrastinate a little bit, it could be because you don't you want to you want to thrive, but you're a little nervous, so you procrastinate on things, knowing how good you may be. Do you ever equate procrastination with being worried about success? That's an elaborate question. Uh, <laughs> uh, I try not to get too deep, but you know, for some reason, I just yeah, about I see, no, I get what you're saying. Because uh, a lot of people, they're not going to admit that. Mm -hmm. They're not going to, people aren't willing to admit that you are afraid to win yeah. in a weird way because you're so used to losing. Yeah, You yeah. might be so used to struggling that even if you have the blueprint step by step on how not to struggle anymore, mm -hmm. you procrastinate on those things because in the back of your mind, you are afraid. Um, honestly, I, I'm, I don't think wholeheartedly, I don't think I've ever felt that way because I just knew it had to be something more than working a regular job. I was a server and a bartender for six years and mm -hmm. getting treated shitty, <laughs> getting paid dollars an hour yeah. even though i made the tips because i i treated it like i treat everything else i gave it 100 mm -hmm. so i made the tips but it was just like living like that i just knew it had to be something more than that so yeah. i don't think I, that wasn't my reason for procrastination you know but yeah. um i procrastinate just because it just runs in my genes <laughs> yeah 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 because even with this podcast for example i was procrastinating on this i i i, I made excuses made excuses without knowing I was making excuses. I always, you know, because uh, I always, I was afraid of it not being good. Nobody want, you know, nobody not paying attention. Nobody not tuning in. Nobody not wanting to come on the show. And then once it happened, it's like I was still finding excuses not to do it until, you know, at one point I'm like, I like doing this. I like talking to people and meeting new people. So it was cool. But procrastination is a hell of a, it, it could mess you up in the long run for real. Yeah. Now you were speaking of oh, working at nine to five, and I had touched on COVID being the last time I did a um, a virtual interview. Do you feel like COVID played a part in people like they drive? Because it was like, damn, at any time this it can be over. Why not, you know, push forward and 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 really, you know, step step on the, you know my dreams and really, you know, do it? Because a lot of times I feel like COVID just made people drive just stronger. So do you feel like COVID like help people in as far as like just going on with their dreams? I think COVID propelled a lot of entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. Um it, it did for me. Uh I graduated during COVID. I graduated from um Milwaukee Area Technical College, um, downtown Milwaukee okay. for film and TV and all that. Um, but when I graduated, they didn't even hold a, a regular ceremony. It yeah. was virtual, which <laughs> that's a, yeah. was pending that. Yeah, yeah, it, it, it's. Uh, I wasn't. I wasn't. In, it wasn't basic. I went to um, like the local college, whatever mm. you say. I was in college for five years. I had both my kids okay. while in college, mm. and um, so it was really an accomplishment accomplishment for me to graduate. Mm. Didn't have that. 
Um, so right away, my mind was set on, I need to find jobs in this field. Yeah. So it really drove me to do that. But meanwhile, I, li- I know tons of people who started their own businesses and stuff mm. in, during COVID. Yeah. Now, congrats on, uh, you know, graduating and, and stuff like that. Um, how tough was that, though, having two kids and going to school? Because I know I was in school once I found out um, my girlfriend at the time was pregnant with my oldest son. And I couldn't even focus on school anymore. I was just so, I was just thinking about money and a job and bringing this little person into the world. I was young, so it was like I, I couldn't focus. So how hard was it, if it was, to focus on school but still be a mother and still do the things we're doing with family? Gosh, man, um, it was, it was, it was definitely hard. My mm-hmm. first uh, daughter. I had her, I went to college right after uh, high school. I graduated in 2014, but Mm -hmm. I got pregnant with her when I was 18, Mm -hmm. just turned 18, had her right after I just turned 19. And um, well, that first time around, that was, it was terrible because I was sick and whatever. But after I had her, I took a, I took like six months off Mm -hmm. and then I went back. And I went back, I had to redeem myself, I switched programs and stuff, but it was hard. It was Mm -hmm. hard at first, Um, but I had my my youngest who is turning six. Mm -hmm. I had her my last year. Okay. And I don't know, I don't know how I did it. I really, I'm thankful for my mom because she she was helpful a lot. Oh no, for sure. But a lot of nights I was crying, a lot of nights I was tired, all that. Yeah, 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 yeah. Not crying. Talk on when you when when times get hard, I ask a lot of people this question like who do you have to go to? Who are who is your support system as far as like when you get those days you just, you just need to cry, you need somebody to talk to a vent to. Who are those people for you that you can go to and, and you know put it off on them a little bit, you know, so they can hear you and give you some advice? Um, my mom, mm-hmm. um, my one and only sister, Cameron. Okay. Um those those are really the main two people that will allow me to offload my problems onto yeah. them. No, for sure. Uh, but my yeah, God, because yeah. I've had some time where there's nobody else to talk to. What do you do? Uh huh. Who do you t- talk to him? Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. Definitely, got, definitely, God. Def- Moms, like, people don't understand because I lost both my parents. Like, how important, you know, no matter how old you are, you always say, once you turn 18, get out the house, do this. But as a parent, you a parent forever. You know, no matter how old your kids are, you never want to see them, you know, fail. They can be 30, 40 years old. You still going to have their back. So yeah. it's important when you're going through some real life stuff to still have moms around that, you know, help you out and stuff like that. Yeah, sorry for your loss. Oh, no, no, no. Thank you. Thank you. Now, speaking of crying, I need to know, when the last time you cried and what was the reason, but it can't have anything to do with death? <laughs> okay. That's <laughs> And that's ironic. The last time, really? Mm. Oh, this is gonna sound set. This is gonna sound silly. <laughs> but the last time I cried, it might not. Yeah. You know what? No. The last time I cried for real, for real, was when we shot "Let Me Be." Okay. That that was the last time that I cried because um, when when Sierra was in her moments in the, in the movie now turn series she was in her moments i was crying as well because it just was a lot mm-hmm. um seeing not only did i understand what that meant because it was my experiences mm-hmm. put into the script but um i could tell she brought a lot of her own emotions and stuff mm-hmm. okay um, yeah. yeah yeah so that's the last time you cried was for the series yeah no okay. for real oh, no, that's, a, that's, that's not silly at all i understand that <laughs> Yo, 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 what you got, what you had in mind was brought to life. And yeah, I can see why. Okay. Now, um, what's the worst advice and best advice you receive? Um, it could be in life. It could be with what you do. There's some, some good advice and some, some trash ass advice. <laughs> um, uh, I'll start with the bad advice first. Um, I heard it a lot the first a couple years ago. Uh, not so much now, but to get a regular job. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. All yeah. right. Get a regular job. Get a regular job. What are you doing? Mm-hmm. That was some shitty advice. Now, was I've people saying took, that just because? Obviously. Yeah, people, um, I'm sorry. Was people saying that to you? Because they, you know, you tell me that you wanted to be in the film industry. They was trying to like 
say that's not realistic or something like all that all mm -hmm. that i would get people who would be like well where are you gonna go you're gonna move to hollywood it's not realistic it's not realistic mm -hmm. um and then some people who were closer to me who knew like financially you got two kids so you doing this and doing that and doing odd jobs you mm -hmm. need to get a real job yeah. and i understand that some of that coming from a place of love but to me it's like i didn't take that advice <laughs> no no i'm glad you did <laughs> okay now what's that good advice that you, that you um, uh good advice that i got all around was it's okay to take a moment um before you speak mm -hmm. When responding to people, responding to situations, mm -hmm. all that. Yeah, I need it's, that advice. It's good to pause and take a moment. Yeah, I definitely need that advice early in my life. <laughs> Sometimes you speak too soon and didn't, didn't even think about nothing you was about to say. Yeah, and you sound silly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So, I got uh, a couple more things yeah. before we get into the movie. Something that you wanted to be that you never told nobody. It could be a good. race car driver. Oh, really? How old were you when you when you had those thoughts, and how quick yes. did, it, did it did it fade? Uh, I I started having them them dreams when I was like seven, eight, because mm -hmm. I would watch NASCAR on Fox. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Uh, on Saturday. yep, and then um, shit, that dissipated when I was seventeen. I got my first car accident. <laughs> Yeah, it was it was it was over. It was a wrap. Yeah, not good on all of that. If you had to tell somebody about yourself, only using a song or an album, what song or album would tell me about Aaron? Like you press Dang. play, you press play, and you it's gonna speak all for you. It could be your current situation now. It could be. Um, Maybe when you first had your first kid, but just a song that tell me about a part of your life, if not your whole life. Hmm. Um. Uh, oh. Okay. Kendrick Lamar, hmm. Good Kid, Mad City. Okay. Okay. See, we already cool now. You said Kendrick, we good. See, my producer, on the other hand, don't like Kendrick Lamar, so he 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 something else. What? Yeah, he tripping. No. We can't do no Kendrick slander over here. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure, for sure. Now, I do got a question because you are um, a producer. If you can go back and direct your favorite film, what would you change or add to that film? Any film? Any film. Any one of your favorites, something you watch often. If you could change something, substitute a character, add something, what would it be? Damn. Uh, damn. <laughs> I know that's the type of question you got to ask before we even start, huh? <laughs> yeah, hell yeah. That's one you need to send me a, a week before. No, I'm just playing. Yeah. Uh, damn. Okay, you know what? I got one. Um, okay. Just because it just came to the top of my head. Friday. Okay. Probably not. Not Friday, not next Friday, but Friday after next. Yeah. I would change. Dude, that's a hard question. Because if it's, it's my favorite film, <laughs> I can't know. That's hard. Damn, yeah. can we come back? Let's, you got one more? Can we come back? That's a hard one. <laughs> no, for sure. Because I was, I'm thinking about stuff too. It's like, like, um. I, for instance, I'm thinking about Boys in the Hood. I would definitely change, like the the ending. Like I, I, I don't think Kane should have died. Like you know, it hurt me. It's something. It's something about that I would change. Like, like Chauncey <coughs> snitching on them and stuff like that. Like it's something I'm gonna I'm gonna change in the midst of society. Um, and Boys in the Hood, somebody would have stayed alive. I, I don't. Ice Cube would stay alive. It was sad reading the credits that Ice Cube had died in the yeah. Boys in the Hood. You know? yeah. yeah, yeah, but no, that's a tough question. That was one of those questions I'm about to uh, send off to the person before you get on the show. <laughs> yeah, damn, I want to answer that. That's that's a good one. You know what? No, 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 fuck that. I, I'm gonna give you one right now. All right. Uh, uh, 
uh, paid in full, mm. I would have to change. Damn, I, I would have to change that. Uh, no, nah, I had to change that. Mitch died. Sonny had to die. Yeah, that yeah. shit was sad, but it had to happen. Yeah, they was captains of them. Yeah. <laughs> but Mitch didn't have to die. We could have saw him going somewhere sad or something. Uh-huh. Maybe he yeah. somehow got locked up. I don't Wait, know. But now, damn, now, 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 too. Now, you, well, series wise, did you watch uh, Snowfall? You watch no for oh, you. <laughs> that's it. That's one of my favorite shows. Huh? <laughs> I'm like, you're like cancel the interview now. <laughs> no, I didn't want. But no, I, I agree with you. The whole uh, Mitch, yeah, I, I, I'd be dope to see Mitch live and see. You know, he can go to jail. He ain't had to die. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, well, I guess I ain't gonna lie. I guess he had to die. Maybe Sonny didn't have to die, but Mitch had to die because it it, it had to show that you couldn't even trust dude Rico. Yeah, that's true. That's oh, true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, um, the other day I was uh, talking to my wife, her grandma. We were just talking about, you know, tough times and and not feeling like you could overcome a certain situation. Is there a time that you can remember that you just didn't that you didn't feel like it was like the end of the tunnel, like it was gonna never change, or if it did change, it was gonna take too long? Can you think of a time when it was just like you was stuck? Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, I could, I could think of a time. Um, it wasn't, it, but it wasn't, I mean, it was a mental struggle. It wasn't a physical struggle. Okay. Um, just dealing with, um, just dealing with Mm co-parenting and trying to figure out the ins and outs of that. Mm -hmm. And I only say that was a struggle because, um, some some people like to live in misery. Mm-hmm. Some people like to live in drama. For sure. So I'm not one of those people. So I like to come to whatever conclusion or whatever that is, and mm-hmm. then we're going to follow through with whatever we said. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think um, the, the time that I struggled the most was a little bit after um, the breakup with my children's father. Mm-hmm. And moving on from that point, you know, I didn't get a lot of support, but having to accept that mm-hmm. and mentally be okay with that yeah. to keep living, be happy in my life. For sure. For sure. What would be your advice to someone that's going through that right now as far as like, we broke up, we have a kid, we arguing, we getting into it, but you know, we want to find some type of peace for the kids. What would be your advice to a couple that's going through that right now in the early stages? Because you know, those early stages of breaking up when you have a kid, it can get ugly, it can get messy. So what would be your advice to that couple right now that's going through that? My advice to a couple that's going through like a breakup and trying to co-parent at the same time is you have to allow each other space Mm -hmm. to heal, Mm -hmm. um, which is obviously easier said than done. Mm -hmm. But uh, once you create some type of schedule with your kids or your, your child, um, just stick to that and allow each other to have space. So there really shouldn't be any extra uh, conversation if it's not dealing with your children or yeah. something that's going on at that moment, because then that's just how you fall back into being emotional. And then you're thinking emotionally versus thinking rationally exactly. about situations. So Exactly, exactly, exactly. Now, I'm not trying to be in your business, but are y'all like cool now as far as the co-parenting thing? No. <laughs> hey, hey. No. I mean, no, there's no bad blood. Like, I'm not going to get on any platform and diss uh, my children's father. But, uh, yeah, no. I okay. just it, it accepted that this is how our life is right now. Okay. 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 Ain't nothing wrong with that. Hey, I'm not going to ask some more questions. I ain't I ain't got it, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know. But um, okay. growing up, you are from Milwaukee. Um, My wife dad's side of the family is from Milwaukee. So uh, oh. I've, been on, I've been on there a couple of times. It's a little different. When I went to Milwaukee, it felt like I was going to the South. Like, <laughs> just the slang. Really? It was. It just felt It felt like the South to me because I stayed in Texas for a little bit. It didn't feel like the Midwest. It didn't feel like y'all was that close to Detroit. I don't know why. I just, I didn't, I felt like I was in the South. But just, uh, <laughs> I could be, just talk about mm. 
growing up in Milwaukee, um, who was in the household, and you know, how was it being a young Aaron? Um, shoot, growing up in Milwaukee, my life, I feel like my life was a little controversial because uh, my parents broke up when they was three. So my, when I was three, so not when they were three, <laughs> when I was three, my parents broke up. So my dad lived in the city um, and my mom lived in Brown Deer. So I went to school in Brown Deer, but I was always in the city because I was with my dad every weekend. Yeah. Um, but shoot, it was, it was fun. I ain't gonna lie. Like, I, for the most part, I had a lot of friends, um, mm. hung out in different places, hung out with my cousins around the city. Mm. Um, and my, I don't know, growing up in Milwaukee, it was, it was fun. See, I, I lived here until I was in ninth grade and then okay. I moved to Jackson, Michigan. Okay. And I lived there, uh, throughout high school. Mm -hmm. And I moved back. How was that transition going from, uh, Milwaukee to Michigan, like, was it an easy transition? Was it tough? It was very, it was a culture shock. Um, I, like I said, my family, like I told you, my family is from Michigan, my dad's side and all them. Mm -hmm. So I know Michigan, to me, is very similar depending on the areas uh, compared to Milwaukee. But I went to an all-white uh, high school. Mm -hmm. So from Brown Deer, which is very diverse, it's like 50% black, 50% white. Okay. You don't really a lot of you know upfront racial things mm -hmm. to go into an all white school where it was like a thousand kids and it was like ten of us yeah. black kids. I know. Uh, so it was a big culture shock and it was so country. Like it's crazy you say you think Milwaukee is country. Yeah. I mean, or down south, like. But when I moved to Michigan, Michigan is country. My family from Saginaw, they don't even have sidewalks. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm not like um, I've traveled since I was young and stuff like that. So I'm not very like um, one track mind when it comes to going from different places and traveling and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So like, so yeah, cause I was, let's talk about like going to an all white school. Like how long did it take you to get adjusted? Because that happened to me. I was uh, in an all black school in the Detroit system and my mom and her new boyfriend, they, you know, we all moved together. And we was out in this little suburb called uh, Gross Point. So it was like my first day at Gross Point North High School. I cried because I wanted to leave. I'm like, I never seen as many white people in my life. Like besides TV. So it was like my first day. I'm like, what? Like every class, like no black girls, no black, no black boys, none of that stuff. So I went back home and asked my mom, can I go to the, you know, the city school called uh, Martin Luther King High School? She's like, yeah, but you're going to catch the bus. And I'm like, I don't feel like catching the bus. So I just dealt with it for, uh, I dealt for two years. Did you experience any racism, you know, during that time? Yeah, I did. Um, when I first started going there, it was like I got treated like the token. So it was like, and and there they didn't really have um like lighter skinned black people. They had a couple lighter skinned guys, but not any lighter skinned females. So like it was it was weird. Like they was, they was looking at me like, like almost like idolizing me. Like, oh, you're black, but you're not dark skinned. So we think you're cool. And I was playing sports and stuff. But um, like my last year going there, um, I wasn't really doing any sports. Um, and I don't know, it kind of, it was like the energy shift shifted. And then I got in trouble every day, <laughs> like every day. My last year, my junior year going there, I fought this one girl who was antagonizing me all the time, this one white girl. Yeah. And then after that, it was like I got in trouble every day. Yeah. What happened was after we fought, they, um, when, you know, they call your parents and shit, they thought yeah. my dad would be mad. Like, they thought, yeah. <laughs> and he wasn't, because he was like. Yeah, you got to do what you got to do. What do you mean? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> And I swear, ever since then, the energy shifted. It was like I would get called in the office every day for it. It'd be any little thing. It'd be like your your shorts are too sh too short, but they would allow the whole volleyball team to wear booty shorts, and I'm wearing a long ass granny skirt. And they're like, "Well, your skirt's not longer than your arms." I'm like, "Well, my arms are long as shit." So yeah. it was always something yeah. with that damn school. And then I left. I came back to Milwaukee for my senior year. Yeah, 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 yeah. We definitely. I dealt with that too, you know, as far as like, I remember playing basketball and the coach telling me, don't bring that Detroit type of basketball to my school or 
this, that, and third. Like, it was like, damn, like, you know, and then I remember um, I got to a, it was almost, it was an almost fight. I smacked the boy and it was over. But I remember we were playing outside, playing soccer, and I said, you know, I'm like, I don't feel like playing soccer. And he said, the only thing you niggas want to do is play football and basketball. So, yeah, so I proceeded. I, I had smacked him, and that was it. And he ain't getting in trouble. I ain't getting in trouble, you know. But I wound up leaving that school because they found out I moved back to Detroit. So, they, you know, they kicked me out because I was out of the area. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. They talking you the whole time. Like, is he going <laughs> to? Exactly. When is he going to move can we, so we can get this goddamn black dude out of here? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like that. Now, now it's, we can uh, fast forward to, um, you know, your new series. It's funny that when you text me, me and my wife was actually watching it because um, I was uh, just sitting there. I'm like, what you about to turn on? Try to let me be. I'm like, oh, I got the uh, the producer that, that's coming that's coming on the podcast. But um, I made it to episode, uh, I believe, five or six. Um, just talk about it. I heard you say earlier that it was supposed to be a movie. What made it turn to a series? And just, uh, you know, talk about it in the creation of it. Um, so let me be. Uh, we came up with the idea about two years ago. I was really going through some stuff with my children's father. Um, he was just really being an asshole. And it okay. was it was taking a toll on me. So okay. we were working on a, a totally different project. And um, I was I told Swift, I'm like, this is taking a toll on me. Let's let's talk about this real quick, because this is yeah. crazy. I'm telling him all the stuff that's going on. Yeah, He's yeah. like, oh, this needs to be a movie. And literally ever since then, we were like taking notes, we put the story together. And then uh, last summer, I, I had, you know, got my things in order um, mm -hmm. to become executive producer. Mm -hmm. and we hit press go on it and um, wrote the script and everything. Um, and uh, let me be, it was supposed to be a movie, but after we got done and it was on the cutting floor, there was so much that we didn't want to take out. We felt like if we were to take out anything else, it would impact like how the viewer would feel watching it. We didn't want it to feel rushed. So we just cut it into six episodes and yeah. altogether it runs an hour and 30 minutes, but each episode is like anywhere yeah. from 22 to 28 minutes. So you may tell me, cause I don't want to tell you know, to the audience that haven't seen it, but some of those events like really happened to you between, you know, you and the guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, some some of the uh yeah, some of the events are based on true life stories of what happened with me and my children's father, just him doing stuff to my, my car all the time. It was just in it, it was never nothing violent, like never no domestic violence. It was just always like when I thought things was going good. For me and the kids, I come outside and all my tires are slashed. Who else would have done it? Like I told you, I'm not really a problematic person. I don't get into arguments with females. People, a lot of people don't know where I live. So yeah. who else? You know, yeah. so just stuff like that. I'm like, this has to be a movie. Somebody, I know somebody else is going through this. Yeah, no, for sure. For sure. It's, it's a lot. And that's why, you know, I'll be um, like with my situation, my wife says she, she says initially she had never talked to somebody who had a kid. I had a kid. We wound up, you know, talking. But for me, I say I would never talk to a lady with a kid because I don't know how crazy the father is. <laughs> oh, my God. So, but it's like, you know, you get those situations like that, and then you get some situations where, they, you know, they, they're perfectly fine. Everything is cool. But it's a lot of situations like how the series is that you got those guys out there that's doing crazy stuff 24-7. And you like, you know what? I'd rather not even be with you because I don't want to hurt him. <laughs> it, but and that's him. in the series, and I also said to my wife, see, this is why I don't believe in having male friends, male and female friends. Like, because my thing is eventually, I think, I don't care how cool y'all are, something is going to happen. Mm. <laughs> mm, 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 mm. So, yeah, like I said, I don't want to give it too much. I it just came out the other day, but you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, DJ, uh, the supporting character, he is yeah, he he represents a, a, a couple people in my life, you know, but again, a lot of stuff was dramatized for for sure. For sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, um, talk about picking, you know, I had Sierra uh on the show, on my show, 
Uh, we had talked about this, you know, her, you know, this is our first leading role. Talk about what made you decide to go with her. And also, when you knew you needed somebody crazy, did you know Tristan? Because he played crazy good. <laughs> did you know uh, you just had to have him to play that role? Yes. Yeah. So with Sierra, um, I worked with her. My first time working with Sierra was on Family Code. Um, okay. I like that movie, too. That was a good one. We dropped that, I believe, back in April, early mm-hmm. April. We dropped it on Tubi. So she's in Family Code. Um, playing the main character's girlfriend. And I liked her. Um, we meshed. She was so sweet working with. Mm-hmm. And then when we got to the scene where they're in the hospital, um, <clears throat> and she just cried. Like, she pretty much cried on cue. Um, she was very emotional and very believable. Okay. And that, in that very moment, I knew. I said, that is Monica. That's Monica. Yeah. That's yeah. Monica. Yeah. No, because at that point when we were shooting it, we had just said we were going to start shooting. Let me be. The script wasn't even done, uh-huh. but I, I was like, "That's her. That's that's her right there." I don't have to even look. I we did not cast like even have any options for anyone else. It was like, okay, if Sierra doesn't want to do it. Now we got to go do some work. <laughs> oh, so from off rip, you knew Sierra was the person. Off rip, like it was just that alignment was just like that. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I didn't have anyone else in mind? Now, um, Tristan, you like, hey, I need crazy. Let me go get crazy. <laughs> right. Just I'm like, I got to get him. We had some other people from here that we that we were thinking about casting for that role. But I'm just like, nah, Tristan. And when I saw him in, in If I Can't, shout out to Mina. Um, I'm like, yeah, this man is crazy. He's going to be perfect for him. So um, throughout that series, throughout Let Me Be, a lot of his the stuff he was saying is not scripted. Yeah. Yes, he yeah that dude that dude. I, I when I had him on the show as well, I'm like, listen, it's, it it seems like a lot of your stuff come off the top, and he said, yeah, sometimes it does. It does. <laughs> yeah, he's he's so fun to work with though. He's so fun, and I really appreciated him because he would he would pull me to the side like, no, let me know how you need me to deliver this, and I yeah. told him like, just. Do what you do what you feel. Do what your heart desires, and he did his thing. So yeah, you definitely picked the right two. <laughs> you definitely picked the right two. Yeah, Thank yeah. You. Now, um, off that movie real quick, um, I want to ask you because you did a couple of things that's on Tubi. Do you get offended when people kind of like, oh, that's a Tubi movie? That's Tubi. This like, do that uh, do that offend you? Yes and no. Mm-hmm. Uh, yes, because. Yes, because on the surface level, you know, obviously people don't understand that Tubi movies aren't, it's not being shot out of one studio. It's not one company. It's not, Tubi is a streaming platform that has thousands and thousands of people who upload uh, content. Exactly. So it's not, and it's shot across the country. So it's not just all Detroit. It's not all shot in one studio. It's shot from Atlanta, Milwaukee, Cali, there's heli independent movies um, being shot by many, many um, great creatives. Mm -hmm. So that's the only thing that's kind of offensive. And then they'll say it too, almost derogatory, like, oh, it's a Tubi movie because of all the mistakes or things you see wrong throughout there. And for people that feel that way, I was literally thinking about this this morning, people that feel that way, it's like, whatever, because you're still talking about it online. So you're still going to have people, you're going to have a lot of people who say, oh, okay, well, it was, oh, they thought that was silly in there. Well, let me go see why they thought that was silly. Yeah. All the time, they go watch all six episodes. Exactly. And forget about what you said because the story was good. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. So I, the, the, there's always going to be people who have a negative outlook on mm-hmm. um, whatever they see and probably shit that's going on in their own life. But to them, that's their life and their business. Uh. But the good things, what was the second part of the question? Because it was like a, a negative part, and then it was like a good part. Well, the one good part I was going to say was, like, how important is to be for somebody that's on the, on the rise as an actress, an actor, or a filmmaker, a director? Like, how important is to be? Well, to be is really important because um, it's, just, it's just direct. It's more direct. I... I, I I really didn't see myself even being in this field prior to meeting Swift and finding out about Amazon and Tubi and having distribution for your films. Mm-hmm. I didn't have, I was going to go into news. I wasn't mm-hmm. even going to go into this for real. Um, so I think it just, it's refreshing. 
I don't want to have to go all the way out to California or even now down to Atlanta. Atlanta, yeah. You're like, give me a job, give me a job. And even when you get in there and say you start as a PA, a person, a, a, a assistant, a, so a production assistant, mm. the chances of you really working yourself up that ladder, um, it's it's gonna be way harder yeah. than just doing it independently. Yeah. And the, and the beautiful thing about independence is you're getting paid for it. We're not doing this for shits and giggles, and we're damn sure not doing this for free. Mm -hmm. so that's the beauty of it. Yeah. Now, um, on Saturday you did the premiere. Um, I kind of knew prior because we supposed to did the interview on um, Friday or Saturday. I knew you was gonna be too busy. I just knew it. So, <laughs> but, I appreciate you for accommodating me. Oh yeah, yeah, no, it was no problem. Like I'm, I was, I was expecting it because I knew, you know, prior to that you gotta get, you know, saying get ready for Friday, Saturday. I know you was doing press and stuff like that. Talk about that day. How did it go? Um, the outcome and, you know, what was people saying about the series as they were wa watching it on the big screen? Uh, man, um, the Let Me Be premiere was, it was a great, it was, it was a great turnout. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, to have the people that we had come out on a, a Saturday, it was hot outside. Mm -hmm. We just had Summerfest uh, <laughs> that came okay. the week before. So I'm sure that wiped a lot of people out financially. But a lot of people came and we saw a lot of new faces too, which I appreciate because mm -hmm. a lot of, uh, you know, people who support us, they're, they're going to support us um, at home regardless or wherever yeah. else. So it was beautiful to see some new people, some new faces. Um, and we got a lot of good crowd reactions, like mm -hmm. parts, little parts that were sprinkled in there that I thought would be funny. People were mm -hmm. laughing. Um, it seemed like everyone really enjoyed it. So okay. I was excited. Now, one thing I was surprised about, and I wasn't expecting to be able to see the uh, um, series so fast. Usually, I know with a lot of Detroit films, or you know, whenever it's a premiere, you still got to wait so long to be able to have access to it afterwards. So, was that something that you wanted to make sure, like, all right, right after the premiere, I wanted to be right on Tubi for everybody to watch like that same night? Listen, we we said it, we yeah. spoke it. Mm -hmm. uh but it wasn't it was never set in stone we literally didn't know like the day before we were just like talking to each other across and like please drop this weekend yeah we thought it we thought we would like with our movies too it's typically uh at the at the at the least it's like three four five days almost yeah. a week from the premiere to the drop yeah. And the longest it's been for us with Family Code, we had our premiere in December and it didn't drop till April. And that's just because of Tubi. They're backed up. So the way this played out and the fact that it dropped in July, July is special uh, for multiple reasons. But um, this month is National Minority Mental Health Awareness Month. Oh, so you taught me something. I didn't even know. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so that was really, that was crazy that it dropped because this series really highlights um, the mental struggles that people can go through going mm -hmm. through everyday struggles. Um, yeah. And July is also my birthday month, so. Oh, July what? July 27th. Okay, okay. My auntie, July 24th. My son's July 8th. My mom's July 10th. My anniversary is July 10th. Wow. <laughs> my uncle, July 14th. We got a lot of June and July birthdays. Oh, man. And that's me, too. My family is July and August all okay. day. My, my mom, my grandparents, everybody, my dad. Okay, well, yeah, happy early birthday. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, For someone that's watching this right now that haven't seen a series, what would be your selling pitch on why they should tune in? Mm. For someone who hasn't seen the series. um, So if you haven't seen Let Me Be yet, and you're like, whoa, why should I tune in? Mm -hmm. From I feel like from any perspective, it's relatable. You've okay. either seen someone who's been through this, you've been through this, a parent, a friend, a cousin, um, and if you haven't, and if you've never been through any any of these things, then it just gives you insight on what single mothers go through, mm -hmm. um, and you kind of see a little bit of both sides. Uh, mm -hmm. And it's entertainment. I mean, yeah, it, to me, it's really good. Obviously, I'm biased, but <laughs> a lot of people said it was good, y'all. So y'all tune in and let me be on Tubi. Yeah, no, I mess with. It. Now, I, I'm quite sure you have seen a, your fair share of Tubi movies and know the actors and actresses. So this is right. I I even write this down. But who was the face 
of Tubi on the man's side and the woman's side. <laughs> <laughs> because I'll give you mine first. I think okay. on the female side, I'm going to give it to Crystal the dog. Yeah. I was going to say Crystal the dog as well. Yeah. On the yes. male side, I got to give it. And I hate that I don't know this dude's name. And I, I knew it. And I just forgot. But I hate that I got to call him like the dude who played Biggie Smalls. <laughs> <laughs> Jamal. Jamal. Jamal, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Yes. Okay. yes. He's, the, he's the face on the male side to me. Now, if I'm speaking biased Detroit, you know, on the male side, I would say, like, um... It's a, it's, it, you could toss a coin between Murder Pain, between Tristan, you know, between those two guys right there. Yeah. But for you, for Aaron, who was the face for, the, on you know, as the 2B actor and actress? It's a biased question. The faces, obviously, are Sierra Smith and Tristan. <laughs> <laughs> right, 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 right. right. I'm just playing. No, for real. No, but I would agree with you. I would, I, I would definitely say right now, who holds the 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 uh the, the 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 fire? The crown here. Who holds the crown? Crystal Ladaw and Jamal Willard. They've been in a lot of projects. They're they're good. They're talented. So mm -hmm. hell yeah. Yeah, because the first movie I ever watched uh, on Tubi was um oh it was with Crystal Ladaw and Tristan uh, Child Support. Okay, yeah, that was a good one. That was the first one. That was the first one. Then of course we got. The most classic movie is buffed up. Yeah, of course. That was my first uh my first to be movie. Yeah, yeah, that's a classic. That's a classic. Mm -hmm. Now what what's your advice to an up and coming producer that that want to get started, maybe afraid, maybe don't know how to start. What's your advice to that person? Hmm. Somebody who wants to become a producer, my advice to you is to grow tough skin. Mm -hmm. Grow it and grow it fast because mm -hmm. Uh, I didn't have any at first, and <laughs> I really, it really took a toll on me. Uh, because dealing with different actors, not only, not only the actor side of it, everybody knows about, you know, or heard has heard stories of dealing with actors. Um, but more so on the business side of like being a producer and getting those locations and stuff. Mm -hmm. Being rejected, you get a you get rejected a lot, especially being here in Milwaukee because we don't have a huge film scene. So mm -hmm. when I'm going to different restaurant owners and whoever, and I'm like, "Yeah, I want to shoot a movie here," they're looking at me like I'm living in La La Land. Yeah. So if you don't live in a in a um, larger city, i.e., Detroit, um, mm -hmm. it, I would assume it would even be a little difficult to maneuver Chicago scene because they don't have a lot of independent shooting. Uh, yeah. you know, but yeah. just if you live in a smaller place and you're trying to get out there to produce, like you just have to have tough skin and get and know that you're going to get told no and you're going to mm -hmm. get people that flat out ignore you. But that should not stop you at all. For sure. For sure. Um, have you ever been to uh, somebody that you work with that you didn't know prior to was going to be difficult to work with without naming names? Did you ever encounter like, man, I can't believe like I wish I never had this person on set. Like, <laughs> how do you deal with that? Like. Like what? 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 How do you deal with it? Do you address it? Do you just say, "Okay, I'm just gonna get through this movie and never call this person back again"? Well, first of all, shout out to my team, Swift Ocean Pictures. Shout yeah. out to them, uh, Helena Sloan and Swift Sloan. Mm -hmm. Those two. That's my team, and um, also we have another producer named Brandon Cole that we bring on. And I mentioned those people because they really helped me um, when I first came into this. Um, I had a lot of learning to do and people skills to learn. But one thing I learned that has been helping me is uh, just got to take a deep breath. You got to take a deep breath because some people, they will talk to you crazy and they don't care. And they're like, uh, you brought me here. I know you're paying me. I know all this stuff, but I don't care because you need me. Yeah. Um, that's the energy. Okay. So. I understand that we need you in that moment because we're making a movie yeah. and we're not the type of business to make movies on just the weekends. You know, when we start shooting, we're shooting mm -hmm. uh, that entire time. And if anything has to stop or anything happens where production can't go on anymore, that's a loss. Yeah. Month -wise. So um, it's, it's definitely been hard as shit. I ain't gonna lie. Sometimes what I do is I just take a step back. Um, I might, 
go outside, take a deep breath, go mm -hmm. into another room. Because me personally, it's hard for me not to show my emotions. And that's yeah. what I'm working on. I'm a very energetic, high energetic person. So mm -hmm. it's very easy to tell if I'm not in a space of, you know, tranquility. For sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Now, um, hey, I had something that I wanted to ask. I, I, I lost <laughs> that quick, real, I don't know why. Hey, I'll never do that. <laughs> oh, God, sorry. No, you good, you good, you good. What is the, um, are you already thinking ahead as far as the next project or you just, I want to focus on this right now and let this breathe because, you know, you know how it is with music, with whatever, we in the, okay, you did that. When What's the next, next one going to come out? Yeah. Um, anything, we, I don't have anything solid. Uh, right now, I'm at this point where I've been busting my ass. Just, I could not wait for Let Me Be to be streaming. Like, even even the premiere, I was excited, I was happy, but for me, that was not the end all be all. Like me marketing this is the end all be all, uh, just for this project in my head. So with with saying that, do I know what's next? I don't know what's next right now. Mm -hmm. I don't. I know I got a, a shit ton of stories I want to tell. Um, there's more that I want to do. I I really want to get off into uh, scary movies, and I also want to get off into just doing more series. Um, maybe a reality show in the works. Who knows? Uh, so right now I'm open for a lot, and um, creatively I'm getting to it. So I don't have nothing set in stone, but yeah. definitely more. Yeah, 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 yeah. And um, I, I, one thing is, as far as like when we doing podcasts, we study other podcasters, basketball players study other basketball players. Is there anybody that you kind of like study just to kind of like perfect your craft? Um. Yeah, one person that I study often is Jordan Pill. Okay. I love Jordan Pill. I've always loved him since he was on Mad TV. Yeah. And I love watching that come up. And just how psychological his films are and the yeah. breakdown of them and everything. I follow him on Instagram. I always follow everything they put out at Monkey Paw. So that's a big inspiration. That's somebody that I study for sure. Okay, 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 okay. Like I said, I, I, I would love to have you in the studio. Whenever you're in Detroit, please stop by so we can have a longer, deeper conversation. Um, the last thing I will ask for, though, anybody that's hearing this, like if you want to give them some motivational words, I always end off with something motivational, something, you know, they can, you know, follow through. We, hey, we heard Aaron say this. We want to live by that. <laughs> so you got anything you want to leave people with? Um. Yeah. Um, when I when I when I came up with Let Me Be, um, I was actually in a really dark sp space in my life, and um, I had a lot of dark thoughts. But what really helped me <clears throat> through everything was just thinking of everything that I could be grateful of. Yeah. Um, and I mean everything from just observing the breath that I breathe mm -hmm. and how that gives me life and, and staring at my kids' faces and how um, I'm that main support system for them and how strong I have to be. So for anybody going through something, um, and if you resonate with Let Me Be at all, um, just know that when you're handling your business and life and you're doing what you're supposed to do, uh, you know, you got to start somewhere, little steps, whatever. Okay. Things will turn out the right way when you keep when you keep doing it. For sure. Uh, that's that's my main takeaway. For sure, for sure. That was a that was a good way to end it off. And I'm sorry for the uh, mishap earlier. We had a little, you know, delay. And, you know, phone messed up a little bit because of the heat. <laughs> yeah, it, it's okay. But I appreciate you coming on, taking a little time to talk about the series. I advise everybody to watch the series. It's a good series. You're gonna see some good acting. You might get mad about some things, but it's, <laughs> it's very good. And um, like I said, whenever you're in Detroit, please come stop by. We can, you know, have a longer, deeper conversation. Okay, I will. Thank you, Shad, for having me on. No problem. Appreciate you.